It is one of London's most famous attractions, but Big Ben has been largely silent for the last four years while a massive restoration operation has been underway. The refurbishment has been held up by the pandemic, but now the countdown to completion is on. Tim Moffat has more. Countdown to completion. One of the biggest restoration jobs ever undertaken on a landmark British building is approaching the finish line. Good to see you, Ian. And you. What is it you're doing here? We're servicing the rollers. This is one of the bits that we couldn't actually get to and service while the minute hands were on. If you're a clock mechanic, this is like the Champions League and the World Cup rolled into one, I'd imagine, this project. Working on this clock will be a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to actually have taken it all to pieces, um, putting it back together again, and then carry on looking after it for a few more years, that's just going to be fantastic. Typically it's this, the great clock of Westminster, that activates the hammer which strikes the great bell, or Big Ben as it's known. We filmed the clock before it was taken off site for restoration. It should be reinstalled soon. And five years ago, we also saw why restoration was necessary. This elevation, the water ingress is actually coming into this clock face and as you can see, it's actually affecting and rusting away the ironwork. And this is in so much better condition than it was four or five years ago, isn't it? Yes, it, it's all been taken back to the bare frame. Any damage was done to it, it's now been coated, painted back up to its original colour. One of the most striking things you notice is the colour of the clock faces. For many years, the minute demarcations, the numbers and the clock hands were painted black. But during the refurbishment, as many layers of paint were stripped away, it became clear that they were originally this shade of blue. It's called Prussian blue. And that is what they've been repainted in. This restoration project was originally budgeted at £29 million. The total bill is now set to exceed 80 million. As you pull off the layers of, of this building, you find more and more that needs to be done. When we're taking out one piece of stone, adjacent stones often needed to be replaced. It's one of those things, until you can get up close to it, it's very difficult to see the scope of the repair. The pandemic also brought work to a halt for several months, so the tower's been covered up for longer than expected. It's sad that I can't see it. You know? Just we're here for one night and then Big Ben's like yes, covered. covered. We've been here for two years. We haven't seen it open. It looks ugly, doesn't it? Yeah, no, we need it back. I we mean, it's it already you can kind of see the restoration. With the clock mechanism out of action, a computerised system has meant that on special occasions, Big Ben has still been struck. We're standing in the, the belfry of the Elizabeth Tower and it was specially constructed so that the chiming bells for the four quarters uh, could be heard right across London. There's one piece of damage here that's been deliberately left alone. This crack appeared when Big Ben was struck during a test in 1858. The hammer was too heavy, but it gives the bell its unique tone. This is London. It should be E, the note E, but it does give it a slightly flat sound, a very serious sound, in fact. So that's one bit of repairing you didn't want to do? That's right, yes. No, no change to the bell whatsoever because it's become the, the, familiar, the familiar note. A much-loved building, largely hidden for the past few years, slowly revealing itself once more. Tim Muffet, BBC News.